On health this morning, a new study from Harvard researchers suggests more women got long-acting birth control following the 2016 presidential election. The research group studied insurance data for more than 3 million women in the 30 business days before and after the election. They found there was an increase in the amount of women who sought out intrauterine contraceptives or implants after President Trump was elected. There's now strong evidence that exercise helps prevent depression. Researchers at Massachusetts General Hospital studied the genetic data of about 300,000 adults. They found people who exercised more were less likely to have depression. In fact, replacing sitting with just 15 minutes of vigorous activity was enough to lower depression risk. Well, forget expensive potions and empty promises. Turns out the Mayo Clinic may have finally found the fountain of youth. That's actually more real than it sounds, we promise. Researchers in Minnesota have uncovered something that could be the secret to staying young. When people say getting old is the pits, that's an understatement. There are literally dozens to hundreds of conditions where age is by far the biggest risk factor, such that if you looked at all the risk factors on a graph and you had age on there, you wouldn't even see the other risk factors. Yep, the longer we live, the far more likely we are to develop a disease, or several of them. That might seem obvious, but the reason why is not. The human body is both wonderful and complicated. 206 bones, more than 650 muscles, and more than 30 trillion cells. Most all of them are good until they're not. A senescent cell is a cell that has stopped dividing. They don't just stop dividing, but they start producing things, at least some senescent cells, that cause damage to the tissues around them, but also damage to the entire individual. Senescent cells can be found at the sites of major diseases, and they multiply in our bodies as we grow old. The Mayo Clinic, working closely with the University of Minnesota, found a way to eliminate them. We found in numerous different mouse models of human diseases that were able to delay, prevent, or alleviate those diseases. The drugs also work to increase lifespan in mice. The results so encouraging, they've now moved to human trials. The first involving people with a life-threatening lung disease. Again, encouraging results that just came back last month. So the trial was under a month for each of these 14 subjects. But remarkably, all of them had an improvement in physical function. So they are- All of them. All, all 14. As great as this all sounds, Dr. Kirkland won't call it a breakthrough just yet. I've been around long enough that I know that when you go from mice to people, everything can go wrong. But the fact is, they're on to something, something big. These drugs don't just go after one disease. They go after the type of cells that cause many diseases. And if we can cure that, who knows what's possible? I think the field and I think the public in general wouldn't necessarily want to have a solution where we live to be 130 and feel like we're 130. But if we could develop interventions that would allow us to maybe live to be 90 or 100, but feel like we're 60, that would be a pretty positive outcome. I just want to be 110. That's not too much to ask for, right? The first question people might have, how soon will this happen? Will we ever see it in our lifetime? The short answer is yes. They've already completed the first human trial, which we told you about in the story, but there are eight other human trials already in different stages. So we'll have more answers in the near future.